All right, like thank you for tuning in the video today. We're gonna discuss the Banks Derringer, the iDash, some of the features that it has that the others do not, and why I chose the bank system. Um, for one, the iDash, the Derringer, and the Pedal Monster all communicate together. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that say, well, you know, those throttle things, all they are, you go out there and you push it to the floor, it's just gonna, you know, the truck's gonna do the same as another truck, and that that's incorrect, okay? Think about the Pedal Monster is almost like a capacitor, right? And and so there's a program delay in every diesel truck and it's, it's in there so somebody doesn't run through the wall or somebody doesn't, you know, that doesn't understand the torque and the horsepower that these things make, they don't accelerate as fast. If you take a stock truck without it, it doesn't matter whether it's GM, Ford, Ram, go put it to the floor and you're gonna feel a delay that's programmed into there. And it's gonna, it's gonna take off slowly and then you're gonna feel that torque start to come in, right? When you put a pedal monster on there or throttle deal, you're gonna feel instant power. You push that pedal, it's instant. And basically you're going around that delay that's programmed into it. So they're very more, much more responsive. Another reason I really like the pedal monster is, is it has reverse mode. That's why it has to hook up to your OBD2 port. And so whenever you put it in reverse, it'll say reverse mode and you know it's not gonna speed up and go real fast backwards. So it's gonna be stock when it's in reverse. When you put it in drive, then that's when you're gonna feel the difference of the pedal monster. Tons of different settings. I mean, probably over 30 settings of where you want that to be and how responsive you want it to be. So you can dial that in exactly where you want it. But the reverse mode is one of those things that, that Banks does that's a really good feature. It keeps people from backing into things. You know, I don't want something if I barely touch the gas pedal, it's jumping backwards. I, you know, I, I, I enjoy the reverse mode the way that works. So speaking of the safety things, and then we'll get into the Derringer also, and I'm not sponsored by banks. I don't have any links. I'm not getting paid by banks. I'm not associated with them. I'm just telling you my review of the product, right? Um, I am a diesel mechanic. I've grown up as a mechanic my whole life. Um, and if you understand that these things are drive by wire, which means they're electronic throttle, and that's, that's where you get your benefit. The reason that I like the Derringer and the iDash is, is, you know, let's just say you put a random module on there all it's doing is increasing your fuel rail pressure and it's it's not sensing your tpms it's not sensing anything it's not getting anything it just increases that pressure which is putting a little bit more load on your pump and it, it's you know you're not you're not gonna it's not a nice linear line when you're looking at that fuel rail pressure increase okay there's a lot of variables that you're missing and so one of the reasons i really like the derringer is it's pulling all that information it's pulling your TPMS, which is getting from the pedal monster. It knows how much throttle you're adding. It knows how much manifold pressure it is. It knows what your EGTs are. One of the examples I can show you is when I pull out on the highway, when it's cold in the morning, the Derringer adds no power until your transmission temps warmed up, your oil temps warmed up, and all the temps are where they're supposed to be. I know that because you can see it. It does not actually kick on until all those things are in place. And so having a module that senses all of those things and gets all that data from the OBD2 is important. I don't have to watch my EGTs. I don't have to watch my manifold air pressure. And not only that, I have a emissions compliant and this thing isn't compliant in all 50 states. So it's not illegal. It doesn't change it. You know, it, it's, it's where it needs to be and it senses all those things. And that's how it stays emissions compliant because it knows what it needs to do and how to manipulate it because it's getting all those PIDs versus something that doesn't have all those PIDs to monitor, right? Something that's just stock. And so do I notice a difference? Yes. Um, you know, level one, very slight difference. Uh, level two, you can start to feel it pretty good. Level three, that's where I run it daily. And they say, you know, run level three on the daily. Um, I don't sense much and the Derringer doesn't actually add much. It might have one bar if I'm running 75 to 80 on the highway. Um, besides that, it's really not doing anything. Now, when I push on the gas pedal, you can see it increase. And so that's something that's kind of nice as you can see when it's adding power, when it's not adding power. And, um, you know, I would say levels four, five, and six, definitely significant difference. I'm not interested in running those higher levels. I don't need that much power. Um, I do know that pulling my RV, um, man, even in level two, it, I, I don't need any more power. I mean, I'm, I'm pushing the throttle pedal a quarter of the way. I'm running 70, 75 miles an hour. It's smooth. There's tons of power there and it's ready to go. Um, 
Is there a difference from stock? Probably at level three, I would say 20 to 30 horsepower, um, which is significant. And, and I, I, I can definitely feel it. Um, I've ran pedal monsters on my Rams, my Fords, and, and now the GM. And definitely the pedal monster is the first thing. If you ask me what the first adder to any of these vehicles is, it's the bang for the buck, right? What do you get the best out of? It's that pedal monster. Um, it's actually the first thing I'll install on every one of my vehicles. This is the first time I've done the Derringer and uh, I have to say I'm pretty impressed. And you know, I, I watch a lot of Banks videos. In my opinion, I think I think that they really focus on this, this Duramax engine. I think that, you know, you look at everything that they build, um, they know a lot about it. They know a lot of details and they know what that they know what they're doing. Um, you know, so you know, it's not a delete. You know, if you want to delete your truck and be off road or be illegal, you know, that's 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 not my deal. That's not where I'm at, right? I don't keep a truck long enough that that's something that I'm trying to do because you know you have to get it back to stock and get it back to where you're gonna do when you trade it in and all those things. I'm not interested in that, but something that you can plug in and install in less than about 10 to 15 minutes and it does really well and it's emissions compliant and it's legal and all those things. Um, they definitely have my attention. And so I think after having the Derringer on this truck, I'll probably have the Derringer on, on my future trucks um, moving forward. But the Pedal Monster is definitely a plus for me. And so I know y'all have asked about it. So I just wanted to do a quick video on it. I'm gonna pull out of the garage and uh, just show y'all a little bit of how it works and how you can change the settings. And uh, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so if you're looking for the part numbers for the GM, uh, that's the part numbers I have installed, the 64310, and then the Derringer is a 67102, and this is for a 23 uh, GMC Denali Duramax. Okay, so if you're looking at my Banks Derringer right now, which the truck is warmed up, so it is active. Um, if I go into reverse, you'll see, it says reverse mode right there. I push my gas pedal, it's just like it normally is. You can feel the delay, right? I switch to drive, reverse mode goes away, right? I'm in level three, and that power is instant on. I mean, there is maybe, maybe a, a split second of, of delay, where if you go back to stock, you'll feel that, and it's significant. Um, you know, changing the settings is as easy as, you know, I'm sitting right here, and let's go back to drive. You can go to level two, level one, that's stock right there and you can go all the way up to six. When you're in level six, what you'll notice is, is this is the power it adds, right? Now I'm barely gonna to touch the pedal. You see it? And we spun the tires very easily. In level three, it's not as advanced. You know, in level three, if I apply the same power, let me back up. Sorry, let me put my seatbelt on so that danger will stop for y'all. Okay, so in level three right there, if I apply the same power, see we only got about four or five bars. So level six is just gonna push it a little bit harder than uh, level three or level two, but like I said, level three is about as high as I run mine. Um, one of the other things I really like about this is you can go into your diagnostics. So if you have one of those wonderful emissions things that pops up and it says you can't drive your truck or whatever, you can actually go in here and you can clear that out. Um, so you go to your menu right here and you can do a gauge layout and change the way it looks, but you can go down to your diagnostics right here. And then, so we can go into the vehicle, the pedal monster or the Derringer. So then if you go into your vehicle right there, look, you can recall your codes. You can clear your vehicle codes. You can do an injector balance rates. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff built into just the iDash itself. Um, you can set minimal maximums and all that stuff, but you know, I just leave it the way it is. It works good for me. The two gauges you see that I look at here, for me, I do watch the EGT a little bit. I stay out of it if it gets above 1250 just because it's gonna last longer if you do. And then your DPF regeneration is what I look at, right? Right now I'm at 19%. If I drive today, tomorrow, and the next day, and I get up to 75% or 80%, and I'm fixing to pull out of the garage, um, you know, and I know I'm gonna be on the highway for 40 miles, and you, you, you guys know, the where you're gonna burn the least amount of fuel in a regeneration is when you're on the highway. 
you know, if you're in town and you're idling and it's trying to regenerate, it's gonna stay in regeneration for a long time. And then also now, if it starts to regenerate right here where it says level three, I know when the truck's doing a regeneration, which when this gets up to about 99, you'll see it, it'll say regen here. And you'll tell the truck's idling up when I'm sitting in town and stuff like that. So one of the benefits that really works for me is I go into here, uh, let's go back into, maybe it is in diagnostics and then go back to vehicle. So I can do a mobile regen or a stationary regen and force it to a regen. So if I know I'm gonna drive 40 miles into town and I'm at 80, 90%, I can go ahead and force a regen on it and then it's at 0% by the time I'm in town. So you get a better clean out because your temperatures are up and all those good things. So it gives you a little more control and then also knowing, just having the diagnostic part of that is, is great too. Okay, so everybody's asked about the mount also. So you can do a search for block eight and you can tell he actually takes a factory mount and installs it on a factory mount and he molds it on there. So it has a little bit of imperfection in here. Let me open this door where y'all can see a little bit. You can tell where he molds it right here, but you know, the way this mount works and it looks, it's way better than the suction cup on the windshield. I don't like that because it blocks my view. Um, there's two bolts behind here, I think. You pop that up, and pop those up, and you do have to take this off. There's two bolts here, and uh, you can change that cover and install that mount. This is the stock one. You know, it's got a couple more. You can see the vents are a little longer. You can just swap that out and put that one in whenever you uh, take your stuff out. So. So I hope I've answered most of your questions. If you've got any more, drop them in the comments. I'll try to get them answered for you. Uh, you know, basically just did the video, kind of wanted to cover the bank stuff. Um, I did have some ask me on my speedometer and I did use the Hypertech calibrator. Um, you know, they make these for Fords and GMs. Um, basically it plugs into the back of the instrument cluster. I think this one plugged into the BCM. Um, part number for this truck was 730129. And you can plug your laptop into it and you can program your tire size and get it within, I mean, like two tenths of a mile an hour. So it's pretty accurate. So anyway, I want to thank you for watching the video. Please hit that like and subscribe. If you have any questions again, drop them below. I'll try to get them answered. Catch you on the next one.